What's up guys, Toby here, and today I'll be showing you how I went from making the robot in Blender here, and exporting it, putting it in After Effects, layering it over the video footage, and then finally getting it out to Final Cut or Adobe Premiere, and finally getting it to look as if it was actually within the scene. So if we start off in Blender, yeah I've got quite a lot of Blenders down there, uh, we look at uh, Blender, and this is 2.61, I think, the version. Uh, so it's an older version, uh, but that's why I made this one in. And if you have a look, this is the robot um, not being rendered. And as you can see, it's still got the... This is the one that's not the Transformer. Uh, there, there's two. There's one that's the Transformer, and it's got the, the car parts around here. And this is... This has been changed to make it look a bit more like just a, a standard kind of robot, no features relating to a car. Um, although there are still wheels on the back, which I just realised, but because the camera only looks at it from the front, that's fine for now. I didn't need to change the back. So if I just quickly show you how this robot works, there's down here, if we look at the layers, uh, there is the first layer, which is the the lighting and the floor and the floor has transparent material that only picks up uh, shadows uh, so that's how you don't see the plane but the the final image has shadows um, then you've got the layers which have the the lights which glow which if you look here um, uh, no, wait, if we look in the compositing, they have their own uh, glow, blur, glare, which uh, are a separate layer so that they glow differently to the main robot itself. Uh, and if we look, was it default two? Yeah. Um, here's the actual robot separately. So here's the, the body. Got the you've got the legs, and you've got what's that? That's the head, the upper arms, the feet, uh, and then the lower arms with the gun, then the hands, and then you've got the armature here. Where, but we'll get onto that in a minute. And then you've also got the lights, the shoulders, and then all the detail within him so if we take that layer away you can see here there's nothing uh, but then if you add this layer in there's wires and all sorts within there so this is it and the animation if we just scrub along the timeline here you can see it's standing still standing still standing still turns and the uh, the gun comes out um, the actual animation isn't that great, his fingers just kind of fold and then the gun slides out. Uh, but when you look at it from far away, it, it looks pretty cool and add some smoke into that as well. The Now, for, I'll show you how the armature works. So on its own, this is basically how the robot moves. And you've got the, the arms and the hands which will move uh, like they would in real life, so if you click the hand and bend it, bends at the joints. Uh, if you just grab that one, then only that one moves. The head can rotate by itself, and the the way that its hips move is this one moves, bends its hips down, and its feet stay where it, where they should stay. You can bend that down. This one here in the front moves it. You can move the entire robot around uh, but this one moves it just from it stays its feet stay planted now in terms of the feet the way that I did it was I got two armatures for the feet one which can move the whole foot around but if you'll notice it's uh, its pelvis stays still so you can make it walk and it's just its legs that would move as if it were real and same for this side and then the other one that's highlighted green is 
that's that basically keeps the feet planted in place when you move this one. So that's how that's how that all works. Also up here, which I haven't actually tried anything with yet, but maybe quite interesting to do. If we look the get the head up, uh, just get the eyes in as well. Um, we look here. There's a you can see there's a if I can click on it, an empty, which if you don't that's just it's a nothing. Basically, you can pair it it to anything. It's just an object that won't show up in the render. And this is actually parented to its mouth. So if you want to, if I wanted to move the mouth around, you can just grab that and its mouth moves with it. So if I wanted to make some mouth animations, then I could for like talking. Uh, the, the the eyebrows, I suppose, is what you'd call them. Also move. You can um, rotate them around to make it look sad or happy or angry or or whatever. Uh, and then yeah, that's the uh, we get it up all together. They go. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's head squished up. There you go. And yeah, just animated it to s just turn on the spot. And as you can see, so that's it in the scene. There's nothing around it. And if we look at it from the so there's the camera there. If we go view camera, actually, you can see here is the shot. Um, and I've set the the video that I recorded on my camera as the if you look here it's the background image the the movie file is the background image so that if I were to scrub along the timeline you can see that Joseph steps into shot on the left there and, and the robot turns and the robot turns at the same time, well just after because I wanted to do it, so if you look at Matt down here Matt turns first and then the robot then looks at where Matt is looking at which point it gets his gun out and that's kind of the idea of what I was going for with this shot and then it steps forward and as you see I positioned the camera so that the robot would look like it was standing within the scene the lighting, you've got the sun coming from this side which is where it was coming from within the actual scene uh, and then you've got another light on this side just to diffuse it and make sure it's not just like a harsh shadow on this side. So it feel, it's a filler light fills in this side of the robot. Then what you would do, so I uh, animate the robot. And what I used to do, which was bad, is if we look at the settings on the side here for exporting, what I used to do is I would get, say, output as QuickTime, and then it would just export the whole thing, like the robot and the background movie files, one big thing, and that would be it. But what is better to do, by a long shot it helps so much, is to set a quick time, have it as a PNG, and it would, by default it puts it as RGB, if you put it as RGBA, which means red, green, blue, alpha, and put the compression at 100%, it means that it won't render out well, actually, if you change the alpha to instead of sky pre-multiplied, it gets rid of the background in the in, in the render, but the reflections because this has a reflective material on it, the robot, it will reflect the trees all around it as if the background were actually there, but it won't render out the background. So it means you can put this robot on top of anything, and there won't be a background with it. And then all you do from there is so you put the output and I recorded at 720p so that's the resolution of the robot and then you hit animation instead of image animation and what it would do is so there's how many frames are there so 20 to 220 20 220 217 okay so there's 197 frames and it will export those 197 frames to where I've told it to output. So if we now, so that's Blender, that's how it looks in Blender. If we now go to where I exported it to, which was this folder, you can see here there are 197 frames. So we're starting at frame 20, going to 217. All of the frames, so if we were to look down at all of them, you can see the robot actually 
I'm just pressing the down arrow really fast to skip through all the photos. It looks like it's moving. And that's just basically playing all each frame really, really quickly. And that's basically what we're going to do next is how I did it is to take all of these frames and then you put them all together in an image sequence, image sequence that makes them look like it's moving, uh, which is how video works basically. It's a load of frames really quickly playing together that make it look like a moving image. So this is the folder and then if you go into After Effects here, this is it in the scene now uh, but what it was was this is the layer down here and I think it was you want to file import is it import? Um, I'm not actually sure actually I think it was and then I think it was multiple yeah it was multiple files and then you would just choose the yeah that's it and then you would just choose the folder with the images and import them all and then it would place them all in an image sequence. I believe I'm not entirely sure if that's how I did it. Uh, but anyway, then it will, however you do it, however you bring all the images in, it will put them in an image sequence which, which is this layer. Um, so on its own, I'll take the lens flares off as well. On its own, that's what you would get. That's how it would look and then if you play through it, and it moves just like I did when I was skipping through the photo or the individual images and it looks like it's moving and that's what it looks like, all, see all the materials have been kept like it was, it's reflecting the trees there's a hint of green in there and the lighting all fits but there's no background which is what we wanted because it then means that when we put the original footage in underneath and after effects and line it up and just position the time so it's right then it should all work and then Matt looks and the robot looks and then there you go that's basically how you how I got the robot from Blender onto the live action footage which then then it's just a case of adding all the effects you want so for example I added an atmosphere just from this from Action Essentials 2 just a load of like atmospheric mists. Uh, then I added using optical flares from Video Copilot. I'll put the links for these in the description below because they are so handy and just adding that extra bit to your footage that just really sells the effect. So if we look, I tracked using these null objects here uh, the eyes so that, and then I track the lens flares to it so that when it turns around, the lens flares follow with it what was going on uh, no not okay after effects yep there we go uh, there you go and then what we're gonna do just as a little effect so you know I said the gun would come out I just added a wisp it's wisp one was the file uh, and then as you, as you go along in the timeline and the wisp so the wisp starts there so if you look at the footage now it looks and then as a gun comes out if it loads uh, the smoke comes out with the gun as just just again like that little added effect of the smoke coming out the gun just really really sells it uh, and then that's basically it, so then that's all the effects I wanted to add, I could have added more if I wanted, I could have added smoke in the background to make it look like a war was going on or something, but that wasn't what was going on in the storyline. Then, so this is the, you go on composition, uh, no, what would you call it? Layer, pre-compose it, and then you've got this, which is just the one timeline of it all going on by itself. And then I added an expression, the wiggle expression, and like scaled the final shot up a little bit. Added the wiggle so that you wouldn't it wouldn't cut off bits of the frame to give it that kind of handheld look. And there you go. That's the shot with all the smoke and the lens flares and the atmosphere and the camera shake all together. The robot is now within the shot. That's all one clip. And then all I did was just export that 
and put it in Final Cut or Adobe Premiere, whichever one I was using. Put that with the rest of the footage, added color correction, color grade, contrast, uh, etc. Just to give it the final finished touch of the film look to it. And that's it. That's how I got the robot from Blender here into After Effects and then in exported it into as a video file into Final Cut. And yeah, so there you go. Thanks for watching. I hope that was useful for you to see how I created the robot and a process of getting a CGI a creature or robot or element from Blender into a live action footage with added effects and uh, camera shake and all of that stuff. So yeah, thanks for watching and keep stay tuned to Flash Flood Films.